come and join the largest and fastest growing social media platform for small boat building and fishing. Come and show your pictures off, show your boats and your fish. Come give advice, come get advice. Hey boaters and fishermen alike, this video is all about how you can turn a standard entry level Minn Kota power drive into a super trolling motor that can compete with iPilot Link and other advanced super trolling motor systems out there in the market today. But it's pretty extensive. And so if you want to go right to the motor performance, right to the install, whatever you want to do, there's hyperlinks and video chapters. You can scroll through the video or simply go in the description area or the comment section and click on the blue hyperlink timestamps to get to your section and find it. But long story short, this is my 12 foot tracker topper that I converted into a portable bass boat that can go inside a truck bed or a travel trailer, toy hauler, whatever. It's just, you know, it's portable. I really want spot lock on it, but there's only a few options. I mean, we could really get any trolling motor for this boat, but in terms of keeping it light, keeping it simple, which is what it needs because it's so small, I'm going to try and go on the lighter end. Plus, I want more of an economic version to show the audience that it is possible to have a really, really good spot lock conversion without having to pay three or, you know, a sub $4,000 trolling motor like we're going to get into here. So let's take a look at the available options of what we had to work with and why we chose this option. First off, you have Motor Guide. It is one of the newer super trolling motors that is meant to take out the Ultrex, although I don't think it did the best job. When I went to do research on it for this video, all I like, could find was not great things about it. I mean, you can go ahead and look at these for yourself, but Motor Guide has been around for a while and they have some honorable mentions like their XI3 and XI5, which people swear by for spot lock and autopilot trolling motors, including some conversion kits for their lesser trolling motors that people can install third party as well. There are some newer versions on the market of super trolling motors that came with a lot of hype, but like anything that is new, it has problems, is a little bit more expensive than it should be, and, and overall just not a good option. In fact, I have a video explaining why I don't think the Garmin Force or the Lowrance Ghost are the best options for tiny boats. So if we're being real about it, no sponsorships, no nothing, Minn Kota is still the best to have ever done it and they have the most available options that make sense from an entry level spot lock option all the way to their high-end Ultrex and Altera options. There are two classes of trolling motors. There are cable steer and electronic steer. The most entry level electronic steer motor for Minn Kota is the power drive, which stock at the 12 volt level comes with no spot lock or navigation, any of that. It doesn't come with anything. It's just straight up a plain trolling motor that you could turn with the electronic foot pedal. That is kind of harsh. But they do have an elevated model at a 24 volt platform that gives you iPilot, which is Minn Kota's first generation autopilot with spot lock and nav lock and all those things. But the price also doubles and it's not offered in a 12 volt version. So that excludes a lot of smaller watercraft, but it's still, it's not the worst option. In fact, it's a pretty good option. It's the cheapest option we have out of the lots. The bigger problem I have is you sacrifice the foot pedal for a controller. And I could think of like a million reasons why that's not great. And we'll talk about that later, but let's look at the next best option, which offers the remote and a controller and a really nice foot pedal compared to the power drive stock. It, this is a Tarova at 199, a little bit more expensive, actually a lot more expensive than the highest end version of the power drive. The biggest and most apparent improvements that you see from the Tarova over the power drive is the foot pedal. It rocks back and forth like a standard cable steer is probably a bit smoother, I would imagine. And the retrieve and deploy mechanism is a little bit more refined and a little bit easier to work with. Both those things are fairly harsh on the power drive and it's probably likely done on purpose. The bigger thing though, is that this version can come with iPilot Link, which is probably worth it. Probably a very good trolling motor, but now we're really getting into a pretty high and advanced. So this is a pretty big crossover moment. It is a lesser platform physically, but a superior platform uh, electronically to the Altera, the standard Altera, but the uh, standard Altera has a self-deploying and self-trimming mechanism, which some people find invaluable in terms of retrieving and deploying the trolling motor. Um, and so much that they'll take a standard Altera over the most high-end Tarova and they'll deal with just standard iPilot versus iPilot Link. And that's something you could think about. They're about the same price. The, the lowest end Altera versus the highest end Tarova. So do you care about that extra option that you're gonna use when you link all your Hummingbird stuff to your Minn Kota stuff? Or do you not care about that and you're gonna run other graphs and you just care about spot lock and nav lock and some of the basic stuff? Can you, if that's enough for you, then I would for sure just go with the Altera because the stow retrieve and trim options are fantastic. By the time you get to the iPilot link version, it is fairly expensive, but it is very worth it in so much that there really is nothing else that compares to it 
in terms of what it can do, except for its, uh, I guess its brother, big brother, I don't know what you would call the Ultrex to it. It's slightly more expensive. Um, it is a fantastic actual true cable steer scissor mount trolling motor, which is invaluable to bass fishermen and to people that really love the benefits of a cable steer in a scissor mount in terms of deploying what it can do for you. Um, you can't really replace the cable steer. There have been attempts to replace the cable steer with true complete electronic steering. You can see that in the Rance Ghost and the Garmin Force, but they're still just a little off and not perfect. And it shows. If you try all three of them and you really have tried them for a while, it's really hard not to call the Ultrex king. It is still king today. Really, if this thing wasn't so bulky and heavy, I probably would put it on a boat, but it is just not going to work. I need something more portable, something that the electronic steer trolling motors have over these cable steer trolling motors as they are a lot lighter and a lot lower profile and the quick release brackets make a lot more sense. So we're probably going to have to go with that. The power drive with the iPilot seems like the most economical option, but the foot pedal missing is a really big worry for me. For any reason, whether you drop the remote in the water, I think it floats, but I mean, I don't know, any reason it malfunctions, runs out of batteries, uh, the trolling motor, what are you gonna do? You can't turn it off, I mean, you're done. You really, I gotta unplug it and stow it and that's it, that's it for your trip. So not really confidence inspiring. And uh, I think really they're ever gonna capitalize on, they're gonna have to find out a stock version for Minn Kota to combine both the remote and the trolling motor together, just for, honestly, for fishermen's safety. So this doesn't seem like the safest option. The Tarova is looking really good right now. I mean, I really like the advanced stowing and deploy options and trim options that the Altera has, but really I don't need those. Those aren't gonna really elevate my like game of fishing, not like spot lock and advanced spot lock versions of the iPilot link will do. And I'm looking at that, but really we're looking at 2,500 and that's just the bare minimum. Do you actually use the iPilot link version? Uh, you have to buy all the hummingbird fish finder graphs which is another x amount of dollars otherwise the ipilot link is fairly useless and you might as well just get the standard ipod really the best option was this and i was going to begrudgingly get this really i didn't want a 24 volt motor i do love the autopilot on the Minn Kota. i think it's one of the best to ever do it in terms of its crossover from smaller to bigger boats but about this small i think it'll kick me right off that was my biggest complaint about it i voiced that in a youtube video and somebody tipped me off to a third-party aftermarket system that they use on their kayaks that'll empower a 12-volt motor to have, you know, autopilot options that are just as good or better than iPilot Link to include plotting and charting and following navigation routes, contour lines, gate settings for the specific type of watercraft. And so I was immediately interested because, I mean, a 12-volt spot lock trolling motor to me on a boat this small was pretty much everything. And what it is, it's a third-party aftermarket system. It's a plug-and-play system. That goes right in there a little bit more uh involved for like legacy power drives but for the version 2 power drive it's very very simple just a drop in plug and play and then you can control the everything from your phone the other bigger thing is ipilot link is pretty useless without min graphs you can't enjoy any of the things you can enjoy with the ipilot link options but for this all you need is your phone everybody has a phone everybody has a powerful smartphone that can run everything that's all you need it's completely independent of any fish finder company in terms of what it can do. It comes with a standard bundle that gives you the navigation unit, which is similar to a puck that Minnecota makes you mount on your boat, only this mounts to the head of your trolling motor in a low profile setting. In legacy trolling motors and riptides, you have to mount it like uh, inside the actual head, so it's completely hidden. And then here's the brain in the navigation unit that you have to run through your boat. This version is specifically meant for a Minnecota power drive both Legacy and version two, but they are refining a version that will go onto the motor guide, the electronic steer trolling motors as well, and that'll be coming in a later video. The bigger thing is this is going on a 24 volt trolling motor. I told you about my worries about a 24 volt trolling motor, but after I found out that it has game settings that are suitable for a kayak and that it will work on any size trolling motor, we're gonna go ahead and run this because if the system works good, then I'm gonna be you know hopping that trolling motor onto multiple versions that can plug and play with pro nav units inside them. I will probably run this in all my boats forever because of what it can do and the money I can save if this all works. If you need a diagram, this is exactly what you need to do. It's that simple. So let's go ahead and put it in. The actual installation part of this video is really simple and only a few seconds long because the system is incredibly simple to put together. It's just a few plugs you have to put together, three really, then you gotta run a power source to the power plugs. And the only notable things are you should run the unit that going to the puck all the way through the coiled version. That way the wires are completely hidden inside the coil and you can't even tell 
once the unit is hidden away. The bigger thing you have to worry about is, you know, where you're going to hide the unit. Once you run the power leads, they need to go directly to your battery. So whether a 12 or 24 volt setup, they need to be ran to the positive and negative terminal. That's how the brain functions and knows how much power it needs to use. Once you're on there, you need to download the phone app, uh, do a firmware update possibly, and then you're ready to go and go ahead and follow these steps. The phone should connect almost immediately to the trolling motor. I know the remote, if you buy the whole bundle with the remote, though you don't need it and all you need is your phone, the remote itself connects almost immediately to the trolling motor at the minute you hit the Bluetooth button. When you go in here, crucial settings are your control settings, which I'm gonna choose the gain settings for a kayak and your route and vector settings need to go ahead and do that as well. You can update or reset all to defaults. I think it's super important that we use a kayak gain setting because of the size and the weight of this watercraft. And it even has settings for a 14 foot aluminum boat. I think that's still gonna to be too much. So we're gonna go ahead and run the kayak settings. If we need more, then we'll put more. And after you choose your settings, you need to go to calibrate. Make sure your trolling motor head is in the correct position that it shows you. So we go ahead and we set that with manually with the trolling motor pedal and then we go ahead and calibrate. All right, we're starting. That's a very interesting sound. Wow, it slows the motor down a lot. You hear that little, almost like a sonar. I don't know if the GoPro's picking it up. Pretty dope. Well, I think it's ready to go. What'll be very cool is to see how it anchors us out in this sauce. Because this is um, not terribly aggressive, but still, obviously, you see the boat and you see all the, the stuff chattering here. Got, look at the wind. The, the freaking trees back there were kind of tore back. Not too bad. Just enough to test what we can do safely here today. Don't worry about this right now. Maybe I'll, I'll do it when I get back to the dock. But right now, I'm just going to, I mean, I have this. I'm just going to fish with this. We'll try the remote out later. The remote looks pretty dope, though. It has everything, but it's just designated. Let's get fishing. I, I love it so far. It anchors really well the spot lock, even at a higher speed, it doesn't immediately stop you and abruptly stop you. It does a figure eight and goes back very calmly to the spot that you marked. It doesn't shove your boat backwards. Very refined technology, like it's been around for a while and it knows what it's doing. So, I mean, it's working on this little small boat. It's probably the best boat to test it on because if any boat's gonna flip or cause me problems in spot lock, it's gonna be this one. I only used my phone for this whole thing. I got the bundle, which comes with a remote, which is probably really needed. Uh, but right now the phone is handling everything perfect. And really it's, I've just been fishing out here all day, throwing big swim baits, trying to catch a slaunch. Let's see what we can get. All right, so we've tested the spot locks feature on the phone, not even on the controller. And it's flawless. It's like super flawless, especially on the kayak gain setting where it works just perfect with this size of boat. As light as it is, as small as it is, but there's more to it. There's quite a bit more to it. You see it fluctuating with the thrust, fluctuating to 01 mile an hour. We could stop, we could mark, we could have a map view. Now it has routes. You know, sometimes you just wanna go in a, in a general direction and you, in, even if you just point your trolling motor in the, in the general direction, the wind or the waves will make it go this way and you have to constantly auto-correct it. You don't have to do that. With lock, heading, you just, it will automatically pivot and move that for you. It'll do that all day for you. But it also what happens is it has routes. It's something that, unless you have a trolling motor that's like between three and four grand generally, you don't get routes. Also you have to have the fish finder so like software that pairs with the unit to get it. So Lowrance, the Ghost, you have to have obviously the HDS units and then with the Hummingbird, you gotta have, with the Minkote, you have to have the Hummingbird units, either Helix or Solex. And so with this, you don't have to have any of that crap. You could have any fish finder you want. You can have the most unsophisticated fish finder, but still have routes because you can do it all through your phone. Yeah, I knew you was there. Stripper? No, it's a big ass bass. Oh, it's close. Oh, my boys. I knew you was there. Oh, chill out. Chill, chill out for a second. Get a breather. Got you unhooked. Nice little fish. That's off a big giant mad crank, which I made, by the way. See that dope? Biggest crank you'll use, generally use, the bass over here in Havasu. They love them. If you're talking about big baits, that's like a sub six inch 
crankbait. Smell better, dude. Without spot lock, wouldn't have got that fish. I'm pretty happy about this, guys. Um, really happy to do a product review. We don't do a whole lot of them. Um, really, people start to troll us when we do product reviews, but really, if we can find a product that can empower our community the way this one does, then we're definitely gonna promote it. We're gonna try and sell it on our store. We're gonna try and do all those things. So if you guys out there, if you have a group of people out there with a really awesome product that just maybe didn't get promoted correctly, it's just kind of out there in the wind, it happens. Um, hit us up because if you know if it's going to do something like this does then you know we're going to be all about it we'll drop videos on it we'll promote it we'll sell it we'll do all those things uh so check this out we are also going to launch a product review on roy's shallow water anchors because i think they are super epic and that nobody's actually hitting the mark on why they're so epic i'll give you my take on them versus the current crop of electronic small watercraft anchors and let you know that's coming up a little later but I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace.